Welcome to this YSL Excel VBA tutorial. This video is going to talk about how you convert the case of strings using Excel VBA code. We'll start with a quick explanation of why that's important in the first place. It's essentially important when you're comparing one string with another, which by default in VBA is case sensitive. So we'll talk about a way to make case insensitive comparisons using the option compare statement to begin with, and then look at a slightly more elegant way to do that using the ucase, lcase and str comp function, so you can do that on a case by case basis. We'll then look at how you can actually physically convert strings from whatever case they're currently in to uppercase, lowercase and proper case. We'll then try to replicate a bit of functionality that you might be familiar with from Microsoft Word. So we're going to generate a custom sentence case function and then finish off by creating a custom toggle case function. So a few fun things to do here. Let's get started. OK, so as usual, the starting point for this video is our workbook full of data all about movies. If you need a copy, there'll be a link in the video description. And when you've got hold of a copy, we'll head straight to the VB editor. I'm going to hit Alt and F11 on the keyboard, and then we'll insert a new module into the project. I won't bother renaming the module, but we'll create a quick subroutine in here that's going to be called something along the lines of comparing string case. And the first thing we need to do in this video is consider why it's so important to think about the case of strings when you compare them. If you followed the first few videos in this series, you'll be familiar with the idea that string comparisons by default in VBA are case sensitive. So if I were to declare a simple string variable dim s as string and then assign a value to it, I'm going to say s equals range a17 dot value. And then what I'm going to do is compare the value of that variable with a specific literal string. So I'm going to use a basic if statement. I'm going to say if s equals, and then in some double quotes, I'm going to type in the word Troy. But you'll notice I've typed that in in all lowercase letters. Now, if that was, um, if that comparison returns true, what I would like to do is simply debug dot print. Uh, the, the value true, so nothing particularly complex. Now the problem of course is that if I were to run this one I'll find that nothing gets printed out at all. So if I step through it you'll see that that logical test does not return true. So the, that just demonstrates the fact that by default string comparisons in VBA are case sensitive, which you probably know already. If I were to change this so that the letter T was capital, uh, or another case letter T, and if I run the subroutine by hitting F5 you'll see that it does indeed print true. Now, this is sort of important if you're processing a large set of data rather than just comparing one single value where you're probably pretty confident about what the case of that value is. Let's say, for example, we were looping through our list of films and we wanted to check for if the film was an action film. So, for example, we could be looping through the range of cells in column A and then checking if the value of the column that was, or the value of the cell that was five columns to the right was equal to the word action. Now in that case, as we have about 1200 rows of data here, we can't be confident that every single row that has the word action in it is spelled with the same case. So in that case, <laughs> no pun intended, we need to make sure we can compare these strings in a case insensitive fashion. So let's have a quick go at doing that. So to expand on this example, we could declare another variable which would hold a reference to a range object, so something like dim r as range, and then we could say something along the lines of for each r in, and then I'm going to refer to range a2 down to whatever cell happens to be at the bottom of the list, something we've done many times in the past. So I'm going to say from range a2, comma, range a1, dot end excel down. So that assumes a few things. It assumes that there are no gaps in my list, and it assumes that there are a f at least a few entries in the list in the first place to loop over. So um, that will do for the start of our loop. I'm just going to give myself a few blank lines towards the bottom and then enter the end of that loop, which will be next R. And then for each one of those cells that I encounter, I want to check if the value of the cell that's one, two, three, four, five columns to the right contains the word action. Now, what I can do in that case is let's say something along the lines of, let's use our string variable in fact, let's use the string variable to retrieve the value of the cell that is offset 0, 0,5 cells away from this one. What we can then do is say if s equals action, and I'm just going to spell it with a capital letter A to begin with, what I would like to do is debug.print the value of r. So just before we do anything more 
um, dramatic, like write those values out into a separate worksheet, for instance. And if that's the case, then all I'm going to do is head to the next cell, and we'll sh we should end up with a list of action films printed to the immediate window. So if I clear the contents of that, and then simply run that subroutine, what I ought to end up with is a list of all the action films in the list. I may, I may lose a few because the immediate window has a limit to how many films it can show, but actually I've got them all. So Spider-Man is the first action film in the list because it's spelt with a capital letter A. Now then, just to demonstrate the point again, if any of these words, any of these genres were spelt slightly differently. So if, for instance, I had the word action spelt with a, a lowercase a, and then I would head back to the VB editor, clear the contents of the immediate window, and then run that subroutine again. Of course, this time, Spider-Man won't appear at the top of the list, because Spider-Man's genre is no longer exactly equal to the word action. Now there are several different ways to make string comparisons in VBA case insensitive. One technique is to change a setting for the entire module by adding the option compare statement to the top. So just below where it says option explicit, we can add an option compare statement. Now there are several different settings here. The default setting, which you would never normally type in because it's the default anyway, is option compare binary, which means that string comparisons are case sensitive. If you want to make them case insensitive, then you can simply say option compare text. So if I clear the contents of the immediate window again by clicking into it, pressing Control A and then delete, and then if I were to run the subroutine again, even though Spider-Man's uh, genre is spelt with a lowercase letter A, Spider the film Spider-Man now appears once again at the top of the list. So that's one way to make the strings case insensitive, or the string comparisons case insensitive. One small issue is with that is that if you were going to be copying code between different modules, you might find that you have different option compare settings at the top of those different modules, in which case the code you've written and copied might not work the way it's intended. So personally, I prefer not to do this. I personally prefer to make each string comparison case sensitive or insensitive as my needs require. So what else could we do instead? We could convert the case of the value stored in our s variable. So rather than making s just equal to the value of r, we could make s equal to the lowercase version of the text in that cell. So we could say s equals l case, which will convert a string into lowercase, as in case you hadn't already guessed that. And then I'd need to make sure, of course, that I was comparing the um, the value in that string variable against a lowercase version of the word action. So it's no good converting the string into all lowercase text if you're not subsequently going to compare it against all lower string text. So once again, having done that, even though now all of the film genres except for Spider-Man are spelt with a lowercase, uh, sorry, with an uppercase A, only Spider-Man has, has the lowercase version of the word action. It doesn't matter because we're comparing like for like, comparing lowercase to lowercase. So if we were to run that subroutine at this point, once again we get the entire list of action films. We could do the same thing but converting from lowercase to uppercase. That's not too big a leap of the imagination. There's a ucase function. But again, in this case, sorry again, no pun intended, I need to compare the value of s against all uppercase characters. So once again, just removing the contents of the immediate window, running the subroutine again, I will end up with exactly the same list one more time. Yet another way to achieve exactly the same end result is to not bother actually physically converting the case of the string you're comparing. It might be important that you maintain the original casing of that text. But we can modify the way the if statement works so that we're not just testing is if one value is exactly equal to another value, we can use a function that can perform case-sensitive or case-insensitive comparisons. So I'm going to comment out this version of the if statement and replace it with another one that's going to say if. And then I'm going to press control and space on the keyboard to look for a function called strcomp or string compare. Now if I open some parentheses after that, you'll see there's a list of three parameters. The two compulsory ones are string1 and string2. So I'm going to compare the value of s comma with the value or the actual literal string, action. And it doesn't matter in this example how I spell that. It can be all uppercase or lowercase or a mix of the two. It genuinely really, do, I, I would never do this in the real world because it just looks horrific. But you could legitimately, if you wanted to, spell that in any way you like, as long as you had those, those specific words, uh, letters A-C-T-I-O-N. The important thing to make this work, of course, is this third optional parameter, compare. This is kind of the equivalent of the option compare statement, but rather than for the entire module, it only affects this one single uh, comparison, this one single if statement. So the compare mode is set by default to a binary compare, which means it's case sensitive. We're going to set it to be a text compare. So we can use VB text compare. 
There's one further option that's not used in Excel, VB Database Compare. It's only useful if you're programming in Microsoft Access, so we, sh we shan't consider that at this point. So we'll do a VB Text Compare, and then we have to check what the result of the String Compare function is. If it's exactly equal to zero, then that means that the two strings are considered to be equal. So we're using a case insensitive, com insensitive comparison of those two strings. So I can say if that returns zero, then debug.print, beg pardon, debug.print, and then we'll say, uh, we say uh, r.value. Okay, so having done that, let me clear the contents of the immediate window one more time, and then click back into that subroutine and then run that subroutine, and once again we get exactly the same list of films, regardless of what case the word action is in. To make this procedure actually do something useful, of course, we'd want to build a list of these films in another location, so perhaps into a text file, or just for this example, a basic extra worksheet. So what I'm going to do is, somewhere up at the top, I'm going to declare a new variable, which is going to be called dimws as a worksheet. And then we're going to set that worksheet to refer to a brand new instance of a worksheet. So I'm going to say set ws equals worksheets.add. You probably know how to do all this sort of stuff already. We've covered this sort of thing in a few other videos. I want to make sure that I'm the loop of the sorry the range of cells that I'm looping over now is specific to sheet one. So I'm going to just modify the way I'm referencing this range of cells here by saying sheet one dot range a two to sheet one dot range a one dot index cell down. So that makes sure that I'm looping over the range of cells on the correct sheet. When I've added my new worksheet, I'd also like to copy the column headings from sheet one into my new sheet. So I'm going to say sheet one dot range, excuse me, dot range a one. I'll get there eventually. And I'm going to say, I'm going to cheat a little bit actually. I'm going to say dot entire row dot copy. Now entire row is a little bit of overkill here. Entire row really is every single cell on that row in the worksheet. So roughly 16,700 ish columns across. Uh, so it's a little bit excessive, but I'm going to copy that to uh, ws.range a1, so the top cell in that sheet. That sheet will become the active sheet as soon as it's created anyway. So I'm also going to do a quick, simple little cheat here and say ws, uh, sorry, big pardon, I'm going to say range a2.select. So that sets me up for the starting point of copying these action films across. Not necessarily the most efficient way to achieve this end result, but I'm just doing this for simplicity. So, having established that we're looking at an action film now, what I'd like to do is rather than debug.print the value of R, I would simply like to perform two actions. I would like to say r.entireRow.copy, again a little bit of overkill, and I'd like to copy that to the active cell. Now the active cell will be a cell that's on the new worksheet, and the starting cell will be range A2, that's the one that I've just selected. Then, as I say, it's a little tiny bit inefficient, but what I'm gonna, then going to do is say active cell dot offset one comma zero dot select. So that will physically move down one row and then end if because I've added a couple of instructions to be performed as a result of that conditional test. Then I'll wrap around to the next cell and repeat the same action. Tiny little bit of tidying up at the bottom. I'm going to say range a one dot select. And then I am going to also say active cell dot current region dot entire column dot also fit. Now if I were to run this one, I've got about 1200 rows of data to process. It's going to look a little bit messy flickering around with the screen in the background. So what I'm also going to do right at the very start of the procedure is I'm going to say application dot screen updating equals false. That will also improve the performance as well. You don't have to update the screen for every time something changes. Then right down at the bottom, application dot screen updating equals true. All these sorts of ideas we've done in the past, but I just wanted to make something actually useful out of this basic routine. So having done all of that, give it a quick test by hitting the run button or pressing F5, and we ought to end up with, at the end, a new worksheet with a list of just the action films on it, regardless of what case the at word action was spelt in. Okay, so we've seen how we can compare strings in a case-insensitive fashion without actually having to physically convert the case of the strings we're comparing. But what if you did want to convert the case of strings? There are several legitimate reasons you might want to do that. 
Microsoft Word has actually got some good examples of things you might want to do. So I've actually got a really basic Word document. I've <laughs> clearly spent a huge amount of time generating this, so absolutely no need to replicate this yourself, but just out of interest sake and just to demonstrate the sorts of things we want to be able to do. I've got a, the same line written out several different times here, of course, with, uh, with lots of different casings for this text in those lines. Several ways you can modify that case. There's a little tool on the ribbon in Word that allows you to modify the case of text. So there's a lowercase option, of course, which is exactly the same as the L case function, as we've had a quick look at. There's also an, an uppercase version, which will allow me, which is exactly the same as a U case function. Everything gets converted to uppercase. There's another one that we can do fairly easily in VBA, which is called proper case, or as it's described in this little menu, capitalize each word. So exactly so, each individual word gets a capital letter as its first. And then there's also another one called, it's called sentence case. This one's a little bit, um, well, not, not quite as, as good as it should be actually in, in Word. We're going to create a much better version of this in VBA. But the idea behind sentence case is that the first letter of a sentence gets a capital letter and everything else should be lowercase. So going back to the option here and choosing sentence case, it works after a fashion. So the middle sentence there gets the correct casing. But if I wanted to do this properly for each individual sentence, I have to select each one in turn, which is a little bit rubbish. We're going to write a, a routine that's going to do that in a much more efficient fashion, checking for. Eventually it will work, I'm sure. Not quite working for that one for some reason either. Anyway, we're going to create a much better version of that that does exactly what, what we'd expect, sentence case. And there's one more as well. Again, this is one that you can't very easily do in VBA, uh, sorry, in Excel, but um, it's one that toggles the case. So anything that's capital letter becomes lowercase, and everything that's lowercase becomes capital. So if I were to just choose the toggle case, then and that's what I get. So everything's the opposite way around compared to the original statement. So it's a bit of a silly one. Um, the reason that one's useful is if you've ever done as I have, you've left the caps lock turned on while you're typing and you start typing in lowercase letters for the first word and so on and so on, then that toggle case example um, or function is a really handy thing to have. So we're going to replicate a few of those things but writing our code in Excel VBA. So I'm going to close down that document and I'm not going to bother saving the changes. And then I'm going to switch back to my movies workbook. I'm going to delete my action worksheet that we've just created. So I'm going to right click and delete. And then back to the VB editor. And let's have a brand new module to demonstrate these next couple of little things. Let's start by looking at the things that are quite easy to do and we kind of already know. So I'm going to create a quick subroutine here called converting case and then we'll have a simple string variable as usual, dim s as string and I'm going to make this equal to range a11.value. So it's got quite a lot of text in that single cell. So quite a long film name, range a11.value. Obviously, were we to debug.prints, then we get exactly what we see in the cell. So I can say debug.prints, and if I were to run that, it's exactly the case that you'd see in the cell. So we already know how to convert strings to lowercase, so I could easily do that by saying, just for the same sake of something, a quick demonstration, debug.print lcase s. There's actually another way to do that as well. There's a function that allows you to modify the case of strings. Um, so rather than just always lowercase or uppercase, there's a function that allows you to choose the case. We may have used this in one of the previous videos, actually. Debug.print strconv, strconv this time, not stracomp. So we've got stracomv, and if I open some parentheses, I can specify what string I want to convert, and then I can specify what conversion I want to perform. So there are some interesting sounding items in that list. I might get a chance to investigate some of these in a later video. I think some of them are a little bit esoteric, so I'm, I'm going to avoid things like Unicode and Hiragana and Katakana, so we're not really deal, dealing with Japanese characters in this particular video. But if I wanted to make it a lowercase text, then there's an option there, VB lowercase. And if I was to close the parentheses at that point and then just run that subroutine, I'll get both of these two lines converting the entire string into lowercase letters. Let's just drag that across so you can see the entire thing. Everything's in lowercase. Uppercase is equally simple to achieve with these two functions. I can copy those two lines and then paste those in. And then, of course, we've seen the ucase function already. As you may have just spotted in this list for the stracom function, string convert function, there's a vb uppercase. So I can choose VB uppercase, and then once again, were I to clear the contents of the immediate window and then run that entire subroutine, we'll end up with the original case and then two lowercase and two uppercase versions of the same line. 
The next case I'd like to convert to is proper case. So proper case is the case where every letter or the first letter of every single word in a string gets a capital letter. So let's have a quick look at how to do that. If I just copy and paste these two lines, we're going to use another function. Now sadly, VBA does not have a proper case or a P case function. Um, if I were to look for a P case or a proper case, I won't find one in this list. If I say proper, there's not one there. There's no P case function either. However, fortunately, Excel itself does have a proper function. So to access that function, what we would have to do is refer to the worksheet function property first. And then inside there, there's a proper function, which has a single parameter, which requires a string. So I can say proper s. And as you probably spotted earlier on, there's also for the stracon function, if you wanted to do this the VBA way, then there's a VB proper case option. So once again, let me just comment out the lowercase and uppercase as we know what those ones do. I can just highlight all those lines and then use the edit toolbar to, to comment them all out. Clear the contents of the immediate window and then run that one. And you'll see this time that every single word in the phrase has a capital initial. Now in VBA terms, that's basically it for functions that will convert the case of strings. If we wanted to replicate the sentence case and toggle case functionality of Word, we have to get a little bit more creative with our expressions. So let's have a quick go at generating an expression that will create a basic sentence case using the exact same string, this film name, Harry Potter, etc. So I'm going to say debug.print and then what we're going to do is use a couple of functions to strip apart the first character and the remaining characters in the string. So if I wanted to get the first character of the string, you'll be familiar with the left function if you've watched the, uh, the other videos in this little series here. So we can say left s comma 1. So give me the first character from the left of the entire string. I want that to be converted into uppercase. So I can say u case left s comma 1. And then I can concatenate that with the remaining part of the string. So I can say ampersand. And then to concatenate the remaining part of the string, I can refer to the mid function. And I want to tell it to get my characters from the string variable and begin at character position number 2. I don't need to specify the length in this case because I want to get the every remaining character in the string. So if I omit the, the length parameter, then that will give me everything else from the rest of the string. I want all of that to be converted into lowercase, so I can say L case mid s comma 2, wrap that up in a couple of sets of parentheses, and then again if I just comment out these extra two lines for the proper case, clear the contents of the immediate window, and then run that procedure again, I end up with a sentence cased version of that film title. Now the small problem with this particular version of the sentence case expression is that it doesn't really quite go far enough, particularly if we have multiple sentences in the string. So for example, if I were to say s equals, and I'm just going to cheat a little tiny bit, I'm going to copy Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix from the immediate window, and then paste that in in a set of double quotes, and then I'm going to type in a full stop. And then I'm going to go and get another Harry Potter film from this, this from the worksheet, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm going to copy that one, head back to the VB editor and paste that on at the end. And if I could quickly find another one in this list, another Harry Potter film, there's one. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I'm sure they were great. I've never watched any of them, um, so uh, I'll have to take people's word for it. So I'm going to paste in that final one and enter a full stop right at the very end. So clearly that's a, a string with multiple sentences, multiple full stops followed by a space and then the beginning of a new sentence. Sadly for our function, if I were to clear the contents of the immediate window, if I were to execute that code, I don't get quite what I expect. It's not exactly sentence case, is it? Because after a full stop, I should begin the next sentence with a capital letter, but everything after the first character is converted to lowercase. So if we wanted to generate something a little bit more complex than that, we'll have to get a little bit more creative. And I think this warrants having another subroutine. So let's give myself a little bit of space at the bottom. And we're going to create a subroutine first that will eventually convert into a function. So let's create a sub called create sentence case. And then we'll declare a couple of basic variables in here. I'm going to say dim s as string to begin with. And then I'm also going to say I'm going to declare a, uh, an empty array, an array that's going to contain a, a bunch of different strings. So I'm going to say dim sentences, open and close parentheses, as string. So that's an empty array that can hold string values. One final one, I'm going to declare an integer variable that I'm going to use to process a loop. 
just so that I have a string to work with, I'm going to head back up to the previous routine and copy the line where I put together a whole bunch of Harry Potter films and then paste that in. What I'm then going to do is split that string into multiple different sentences using a function we've seen in one of the previous videos. The function is called split. Now, if you haven't watched that video, we'll, we'll cover this in a in fairly basic detail. We won't go into a huge amount of explicit detail here. But essentially what I can do with my entire string is I can assign a split version of that string to an array. So I've got the sentences array that's currently empty. I'm going to assign value to that, assign a value to that or values to that using a function called split. Now the split function requires a complete string, so I'm going to refer to my letter s or my variable s, and then I can specify a delimiter for that string, so a character which separates the other characters uh, or the uh, the bits of that string. So the character I'm going to use in this case is going to be a full stop character. If I enter that full stop and then close the parentheses, it's probably best just to step through this with the locals window displayed. If I use the F8 key to begin stepping through, you'll see that my S variable contains the full string to begin with. But if I then execute this line by pressing F8, you'll see that my sentences array contains everything separated by full stop, so each individual Harry Potter um, film title. So what I need to do now is, once I've split those into their component parts, is I need to make sure that the first letter of each individual part of the entire phrase has a capital letter, and then the remaining characters in that string are lowercase letters. So I can achieve that reasonably easily by using a simple for next loop, and that's what this integer variable was for. Now to process the individual sentences in the array, I'm going to use a basic for next loop. So I'm going to say for i equals, and I can't guarantee how many individual sentences there will be in this array eventually, so I want to make sure that it will work flexibly. So I'm going to use the l bound function to calculate the lowest bound of the sentences array, and then I'm going to use the u bound function to calculate the upper bound of the array. If you're not that familiar with working with arrays, we've got an entire video that explains all about how arrays work. So again, I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail here. But I'm going to close that loop by saying next i, and then the first thing I'd like to do inside this loop is assign the current sentence to my string variable. So I'm basically going to overwrite my string variable with just the first sentence. So I'm going to say s equals uh, sentences, and then use the counter variable, the integer variable, to retrieve the sentence at that particular element of the array. Next I'd simply like to create the sentence case for that one single sentence that's contained in that string variable. So the simplest way to do that is to cheat a little bit, head back up to the previous routine and then just copy the expression that we were generating earlier on, and then we can say s equals and then paste that in, and then we can say sentences i equals s. So once we've converted it to sentence case, we'll just pass that string back into that element of the array. Now at that point, things aren't quite as complete as they need to be. Let me just quickly show you why. If I were to use the F8 key to begin stepping through, and if I can expand my sentences array here. So hopefully what you can see here, you might just about be able to make it out. Sorry I can't make the font size of this particular part of the screen any bigger. But the first sentence will work quite beautifully. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix begins with the letter H, capital letter H, and that will be converted into a Harry Potter with a capital letter H, and then all the remaining characters will be lowercase characters, and that will then feed back into element zero of the sentences array. Then it will move on to the next one, and it will load the next phrase, which is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now you may just about be able to make out this extra little space character here. So the first character of this string is a space, which I'm going to try to convert into an uppercase space. <laughs> Not that you'll be able to tell that, and then the remaining characters become lowercase characters, which means that basically everything else after the space becomes a lowercase character. And the same will be true for the next one here as well. So the, uh, the next one will become all lowercase, and then finally I've got one extra empty string actually, so I've got one final empty string where the last full stop in the sentence was. That's it, It's processed, although it's not really necessary to process it, we could eliminate that as well. But more importantly, we need to make sure that we get rid of this extra space at the start of the string. So to do that we can use another function. We haven't used this, I don't think, in any of the little videos in this little mini-series on strings. There's a function called trim, which will 
take away leading and trailing spaces from a string. So you may have used the trim function before in Excel. There's, there are three different versions of the trim function in VBA. There's trim, there's L trim, which will take spaces from the left hand side of a string, and there's R trim, which will take spaces from the right hand side of a string. I just want to get rid of any leading and trailing spaces. So I'm going to say S equals trim sentences I, and that will get rid of the space characters, and that will solve that little particular problem. If we wanted to avoid having to process the uh, the empty string at the end, it doesn't make any difference, it doesn't cause any harm, but if you wanted to avoid pro attempting to process that, we could simply check to see if, um, if the result of the value of S was an empty string, or in fact we could do that before we attempt to assign a value to it. So we could simply say here, if sentences i is not equal to an empty string, then perform that set of three instructions. I can select those three lines and hit the tab key to indent them all, and then finally drop in the end if at the end. Okay, so at that point we'll have ended up with the array containing all of the individual sentences happily now converted into sentence case. The next job is to put them all back together again into a single continuous string. The technique we're going to use to join back together all of the individual strings into a single string is another function we've used in a previous video called join. So join effectively does the opposite of what split does. Split takes a continuous string and breaks it into an array join takes the contents of an array and joins them into a single string. So you tend to use these two in conjunction with each other. So let's just give myself a blank line or two after I've finished looping. I'm going to now say s equals join, open some parentheses. I've got to refer to my array first, which is sentences. And then I can specify what delimiter character I would like to use to separate the individual sentences. You may have noticed from the immediate, from the locals window, beg your pardon, earlier on, that when we split using a full stop, the full stop character was removed. So I would like to put a full stop character and a space in between each, uh, each uh, individual sentence, beg your pardon. So sentences, comma, then instant double quotes, a full stop and a space. I can then close the double quotes and close the parentheses. If I can then just finally debug.print the results of that, so debug.prints, and then clear the contents of the immediate window, run the entire subroutine, I will end up with a beautifully sentence cased version of the original string. So the start, the first character of each sentence, or the first actual letter rather than the first character of each sentence, becomes a capital letter, and the remaining letters in that sentence become lowercase letters. One tiny little additional thing, you may notice, you only notice this actually if you select it at the end, but you can see I've got a full stop and a space at the very end of the string here as well. I don't want that extra space, and we already know how to get rid of it, so let's just add in a quick trim to trim off any leading or trailing spaces. And then one more time if I were to just clear the contents of the immediate window and run that one one more time, and then right at the end of my string now, there's no extra space. You can see there's no extra space at the end. Now, although this is working reasonably well already as a subroutine, it would be much more useful as a function that we could call and pass any string into it to return the sentence cased version. So rather than using a subroutine for this, what we're going to do is convert it into a function. Quick, simple way to do that if you don't care about keeping the original subroutine, and if you do care about keeping the original, just make a copy of this. I'm going to convert my existing subroutine into a function by changing the word sub to a function. And then you'll see that if I click away from that line, it creates the word end function rather than end sub. I'm going to modify the name of the function so it's not called create sentence case, it's just called sentence case. I want to tell the function that it's going to return a string. So the single distinguishing feature that separates functions from subroutines is that a function can return a value. You probably know this already if you've watched earlier videos in this series. So I'm going to say function sentence case as string. So the result of this function will be, of course, a string. When I want my function to return something, I can simply state the name of the function and then state what value it will return. So rather than at the bottom saying debug.prints, I'm going to say sentence case equals s, and that will be the value that the function returns. It will also be immensely useful if I can actually pass a value into the function. So currently it's just going to convert this original phrase, Harry Potter, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm going to do is provide a parameter to this function. So I'm going to move my variable without the word dim. I'm just going to move s as string 
inside the parentheses there. So that declares a parameter that I can now pass arguments into to modify what the function does each time. I'm going to get rid of the remaining dim at the top there, and I'm also going to get rid of the line which sets the value of s, because that will now be passed in via different, um, different function calls. So that's all that we needed to do to convert it into a function. And the really neat thing about this is that we can call that function from a variety of different places. If I just clear the, in fact, and yes, I'll clear the contents of the immediate window, beg your pardon. If I type in a question mark into the immediate window just to test my function, press control space, look for sentence case, open some parentheses, I can type in some double quotes and then type in some silly text or anything you like, um, making sure you put full stops to separate individual things. You can do um, random text like so. It really doesn't matter as long as you put in a few double, st a few full stops or periods to make sure that you separate out sentences, close the double quotes and close the parentheses and then hit enter. What you ought to end up with is the same string returned back to you, but in sentence case. The other quite nice thing about creating user-defined functions, although they're not the most efficient things in the world, they're great for custom calculations like this. You can actually use these in your worksheets as well. So imagine that my list of film names was actually a list of, of sentences in the wrong case. I could create a new calculation. Let's say I'm going to head across the column L to avoid just messing up the data that I already have here. And in here I could say equals and then start typing in the name of my custom function, sentence case. And you'll see it should appear in the IntelliSense list along with all the other built-in Excel functions. You'll also be able to find that if I just hit escape a couple of times, you'll also be able to find that in the function wizard if I choose to insert a function and then choose from the drop down the second choose user defined and you'll see my sentence case function is sitting there as well. I can give that a quick double click to insert it I get a basic function arguments dialog box, not particularly complicated, no help available. But if I just refer to a cell like A2, Jurassic Park and then hit OK and I'll get the results of that, Jurassic Park. I could double click to fill that formula downwards and it'll take a little while to process, but you'll see eventually they all change to give me the sentence case for each individual film in my list. Some have got slightly longer names than others, but you can see that it's giving you the sentence case. I'm pretty sure none of our film names actually contain a full stop. So there's no, oh, beg pardon, there are one or two, but sadly for testing purposes, it's actually followed by a number. So there's no real effective way to tell that it is working properly, but you could easily check for that by adding in some different sentences into uh, into column A. So there you go, there's a nice neat little way to encapsulate your, your logic, your calculation into a reusable user-defined function. We've got previous videos in the series that explain how to create user-defined functions, so there's a few more examples, and even how to convert that, those functions into an Excel add-in as well. That's quite handy to be able to distribute the function, but I'm not going to do that in this video. We've got We've done that already earlier in the series. Okay, so there's just one more example we'd like to try to recreate from the word string conversion functions. I'd like to create a toggle case example in Excel VBA. So let's head back to the VBA editor and we'll stick with the same module for this. Let's create a quick new subroutine just down towards the bottom called toggle case. Now there are a few different variables we're going to use to generate this, this example. I'm going to have two string variables that hold both the original version of the string and the toggled or the inverted version of the string. So I'm going to say dim s1 as string and then another s2 as string. Not very inventive names I appreciate but um, feel free to give them more inventive names if you like. I'm just feeling a little tiny bit lazy. The string 1 will be the string containing the original case and string 2 will be the inverted case. What we're going to do to convert one to the other is loop over the string character by character and for each character we encounter we'll test if it's uppercase, convert it to lowercase and vice versa. So it's not necessarily the most efficient way to achieve this result but it's the best I can think of off the top of my head. So, and it's a nice little demonstration of some of the string functions we've looked at in this little mini series as well. So I'm going to have another variable that's going to keep track of each individual character. I'm going to say dim c as string. Now because this variable is only ever going to contain one single character, I can guarantee its length will always, always be one. We can use something we looked at very early on in this little mini-series, the very first video we, we created an introduction to strings. We can make this a fixed length variable, so I can multiply that by one, or put in star one, asterisk one, and that will make that variable a fixed length variable, a fixed length string. So it can only ever contain one character, but it requires less memory to process a fixed length string than a variable length string. So we might as well take advantage of it 
while we're doing something that we can guarantee the length of. One last one, I'm going to declare a variable that keeps track of a number, so the number of characters. I'm going to say dim n as long. I'm using long because you'll, you'll be familiar again from the earlier video in the series that a string, a variable length string, can contain up to 2.147 billion characters-ish, and the integer data type isn't anywhere near big enough to accept that number. Integer stops at 32,767 whereas long goes all the way up to 2.147 billion, so that's the safest one to use for this example. Having said that, we're going to create a very basic, simple string to begin with. I'm going to say s1 equals, and then we'll insert a literal string again just for testing purposes. Let's do a couple of examples of uppercase and lowercase and uppercase again, and that will probably do for now. And then what we're going to do is loop over the characters of that string. We're going to use a for next loop to do that. So we're going to say for n equals 1, 2, and then I'm going to use the len function to calculate the length of s1. So the characters in a string are indexed from 1, so we, we can guarantee that n will always the first character will always be position number 1, and then the last character will be whatever the length of the string is. I can say next n to move on to the next one. And then what I'd like to do at that point is read the current character into my c variable. So I'm going to say c equals mid. The string I'm extracting the data from is s1. The character position I want to get is n. And then the length of the string is always going to be exactly one character. So I can choose length or set the length to 1. Quick, simple uh, logical test at this point. We've got a variety of ways of doing this, but I think a simple, convenient way is to use our str comp function, something we've already used earlier in the video. So I'm going to compare the value of c against the, I'm going to go with the uppercase version of c. It doesn't matter if you do this in uppercase or lowercase, you can test this logic either way around, but the really important thing here is that we're definitely testing in a case sensitive compare mode. Now that's the default for any module anyway, but to be absolutely sure, um, and it's also the default of this particular um, method, so um, it's, a big one. it's the, the default for the method rather than the default for the entire module, so we don't absolutely need to do this, but if you wanted to be explicit and you wanted to to make sure that people reading this understood what was going on, you could put in VB binary compare. So I can close the parentheses at that point. If I check that that is equal to zero, then I will know that that individual character is definitely an uppercase character. And if that's true, then what I can do is say, well, c equals the L case version of c. So I can change it from upper to lower case. Otherwise, it could only possibly be, if it wasn't uppercase, it could only possibly be lower case. So I can say c equals u case c. So that will convert any uppercase character to the lowercase and vice versa if I stick in the end if function. What I then want to do is, is build up the each individual character into string 2. So I'm going to set s2 to be equal to whatever it currently contains and the character that I've just converted. Once I've finished looping, just to demonstrate that it works, let's have a couple of debug.prints. So I can say debug.print s1, debug.print s2. And then finally, if I clear the contents of the immediate window and then run the entire routine, I'll end up with the inverted version of my original string. The final thing to do then to make that useful would be just as we did with the sentence case subroutine, convert that into a function. And we can basically follow exactly the same steps. So if I can change sub to the word function and then make sure that that function returns a string, I don't have to state that, it will return a value without specifying its type, but it returns a variant, and it's always better to be specific about the data type if you can be. We also need to declare a parameter, so I'm going to use s1 as a parameter passed in, so I can just click and drag to move s1 as string, and then just take away that extra comma that's left trailing around there. I still need s2 as string as a variable. Should really give this a better, more sensible name, but that would mean I'd have to change all the other S1s in here as well, so I'm not going to do that at this point. Well, actually, there's, there's not that many to do, but if you wanted to give it a more sensible name, you can edit the name there and then just replace any other S1. Apart from that one, which we don't need anymore, we're not going to explicitly set the value of S1. That's going to be set by passing an argument into that parameter. So we can remove that line that says S1 equals ABC, etc. Finally, we don't want to debug.print s1 and s2 at the end, what we want to do instead is just return that as the result of the function. So to do that I can say toggle, sorry not toffle, toggle case 
equals s2, which is the inverted version of the original string. So what we ought to be able to do now is if I just have a quick go at maybe having a question mark in the immediate window and saying toggle case and then I'm going to open up some round brackets and double quotes and close the double quotes in the parentheses and then hit enter and I'll get the inverted version if I do the same thing to reinvert what I've just inverted just to make sure that the whole thing works hit enter at the end that will give me the original inversion and again you can use that very oh, sorry that function can be used in your worksheets as well so I could for some reason, if I really wanted to convert the or invert the case by saying equals toggle case, and then let's refer to cell A2, and then so you've got too many parentheses there, A2, close the parentheses, and that will give me the inverted version of Jurassic Park. And again, if I just double click to fill that one down, it'll take a little while to process, but eventually I'll end up with the inverted string of every individual film, which looks a bit stupid, doesn't it? And this is the sort of thing you get if you accidentally type with the caps lock key still turned on. So it would make, probably make more sense to invert it the other way. If you end up with text like this, use your toggle case function to change it back to its sensible case. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching, see you next time.